Hello and welcome back to Pretty in Pink Month where I am making loads of dresses from the 50s, vintage dresses. And today I'm doing Butterick 6055 which is from 1950. And yeah, I'm using this aqua and pinks fabric with florals and it's got very, very big pockets. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. Oh, there are so many gorgeous vintage patterns that I want to get through this month. But I thought I would work with the fabric that started it all. Um, so these are pictures of the main character from Pretty in Pink, the movie from 2000, uh, 1986. And um, yeah, she wears a lot of florals and you can see the leggings here and the skirt. And yeah, when I saw first saw this um, fabric, like... Oh gosh, about a year ago, I suppose. Um, yeah, I was like, oh, that looks like what the character wears in Pretty in Pink. And um, yeah, then I went back and got it. And um, yeah, and it's been sitting in my fabric stash. And yeah, so that's why I decided that I um, wanted to do a whole month of, you know, a capsule collection from Pretty in Pink because I love florals and pink and aqua are gorgeous together so yeah so I thought I would use this particular fabric I only have three yards of it so I had to do a short dress so I thought this one from 1950 when um yeah would be a good one it's sort of it looks like um diner uniforms that people wear in like those old-fashioned American diners so yeah um and I thought I'll do it in a floral I do want to maybe next year do it in some solid colors because I think they look fabulous in the solid colors but yeah I thought I'd do it in a floral for this month so yeah um I it's got a, the colors a little bit weird and I'm not used to doing it's basically lapels but no collar which is odd and I don't think I've ever done something like that before so I thought I'd start with something easy the pockets because I just the reason I bought this pattern was because I love the pockets so um there's you have to cut out four and then you sew two together and the other two together so I pinned them then sewed them then trimmed down the excess and then you sort of and clip the corners and um also the rounds a bit and you had to leave a little bit where you um to turn the whole thing through so i did that and then i turned it through and i poked the um corners out and then i just stitched up the um the little bit remaining and pressed them i actually used blue cotton a pale blue thread for this and it just looked horrible so for the rest of it i used um a gray thread and it looks beautiful but um yeah and these are little strings you have to make little bows for the dress um for the pockets and um yeah the way they make you do it oh it's just you can actually see the seam I would rather you did it next time I make this because I'm definitely make making this again I love it um yeah next time I do it I'll do it so that the um the seam is at the back but yeah you just sort of hand sew them and then um, I made this skirt so I could pin the pockets on and making sure to leave um, that little area at the top of the left seam for the side closure and then yeah I just could not hang these pockets right correctly and um, so I put them on and then yeah I ended up just putting the skirt on the um, mannequin to try and get it right and it didn't work so I just sort of gave up for a bit and decided to move on to the bodice <laughs> but then the bodice was too difficult so I went back to placing the um placing the um pockets and I ended up doing that usual artist trick where you just turn the whole thing upside down and um yeah and then I just put them on that way and it was fine because I just needed one step of removal because I was just like yeah I was caught in a loop of saying oh they're not perfect they're not perfect so yeah I just turned it upside down and that was fine and then I was next up was the bodice but um yeah the front bodice I just it was confusing the instructions were just 
vague and confusing and so I did the back this is the back and it just has it's simple it has two darts that you have to do at the back so you just machine sew them and then press them and then at the top you have to stay stitch so I did that as well and then there's also a belt and um, instead of just making a belt that has to have you have to go out and buy a buckle. I just made the belt twice as long so I can just tie it. So yeah, I did that and it's just standard belt. You know, you just fold it in half and then machine sew it, but you leave a little gap. Then you pull it through, make sure the corners go out properly and then you press it and then you just sew up the little bit left. So once all that was done, then we were back to just the front of the bodice was um, all that was left. Now, um, on this one, it doesn't have a collar, but they call it a collar. It has lapels and, um, yeah. And what really confused me is you have to cut out two fa facing pieces for the lapels and the front bodice has lapels grown on. And then you also have to cut out two fusible interfacing pieces of, um, the lapels facing but you never iron them to anything for the longest time you don't iron them to anything they're just like a separate thing that you sew to yeah it just really confused me if they're just written you don't you don't um iron this onto anything for the longest time then I would have everything else would have made sense to me but yeah, so I sort of, I just wrestled with this pattern. It did not make sense to me. Some of it is just the language is confusing. Like when you have to put two right sides together, they don't tell you that. They just like say, sew this. And it's like, well, if I have to, my last step, I had everything in, I was working on the inside of the garment and now you expect me to turn it out, turn the whole thing out and have the garment right side out and then put the right side of the facing on it. Oh, it was just, yeah, they just left out so much stuff that I guess I'm used to using Vogue patterns and they are very standardised and uniform in the way that they say what you have to do and it's really I just find those ones quite easy to read and I found this one really frustrating and difficult like it just it seemed needlessly confusing like when I finally figured out what I had to do then um yeah I was like oh you could have worded that in such a way that it would have been so clear and concise but you didn't and yeah, so I just found this whole process really frustrating. But um, yeah, I think if you knew going in and you hadn't done this before, as long as you know that the fusible interfacing is actually kind of just a piece of fabric, it's not going to be ironed to something else immediately, then you would be fine. But yeah, nowhere <laughs> In the instructions, did they tell me that? So, yeah. So, anyway, I um, attached the facing of the collars and, um, and then attached that to the piece. And then, um, yeah, once you've done that, then you attach them to the back and then you have to sew down all the in, um, facings. And, um, well, you don't have to, but I just just couldn't leave them all hanging. So I went round and hand sewed them all. And um, oh yeah, I think I had my iron up too high. So yeah, when I ironed bits of it, it went peach, the pink roses went peach. And I should have turned it down, but it's so pretty when they turn to a different colour. So I left it up. But once I wash it, it'll be fine. But um, yeah, so once I uh, done the collar then the next thing you have to do is just iron uh just sew the shoulders and then the underarms and of course you have to leave the bit for the side closure and then you hem the um the the sleeve cuffs and then once the whole of the bodice is done then you attach the bodice to the skirt and yeah as I said I'd already done the um belt thing and um, yeah, 
so then it was and and then um once they're attached then I just went and um you sort of flip the um the seams upwards and you just hand stitch them and then well the next thing you have to do is the side closure but I um I actually went to the fabric store last week went in like I normally buy th everything online because uh, I I've had um COVID and I really don't want it uh, uh, to get another variant because I ended up having long COVID and yeah so I'm a little bit still wear I'm one of those people who are still wearing a mask so anyway I went into the fabric store and yeah I bought all these zips and I thought I bought all the zips for all the dresses I'm going to make for Pretty in Pink month and I forgot to buy <laughs> a zip for the fabric that started it all it's just I think I was um because I've got this flamingo fabric that's also it's more of an aqua aqua rather than a blue aqua and pink and yeah I think I got the zip for that and then just completely forgot the one for this so um oopsie I'll have to get it I'll, I'll get it before the end of the month but um yeah <laughs> And um, I'll probably just do a bunch of zips together. And yeah, and I also have to hem it, obviously. But yeah, this is it. And um, yeah, so I wasn't sure. You can sort of wear the collar up and, or you can sort of wear it. This is sort of halfway in between up and totally flat. And yeah, this is it without the um, my little belt or sash thing on. And yeah. I really do like those peach and I I just put a sort of purpley coloured flower on it. I'm not sure that's fabulous, but um, yeah. And I really like it. It's kind of quite cheerful and um, cute. And this is what it looks like from the side. It's quite a nice silhouette and yeah, nice and plain. It's a little bit, seems like it's a little bit bunchy at the top, but that's partially the mannequin, but it's also means that you have room. Like if you want to go to the grocery store, you can wear a dress like this because you can, you know, get stuff off the top um, shelves and things like that. It's, it's, or you can do housework in it or, in, you know, you can actually move in it rather than some of the dress from the, you know, vintage dresses are a little bit constricted and the these pockets are adorable but yeah as I said I think next time I make this dress um I'll make them a little bit further around to the side so like part of the pocket is actually on the side on the back half of the skirt rather than both of them all being on the front I think if you um a standard size so a 14 or a 16 or a larger size 20 or above then I think you could get away with having both of them on the front but yeah if you're um, anything smaller than that then I think because they're such large pockets it does look a little bit like you're wearing an apron <laughs> with the big pockets. Oh, doesn't this look very um, Alexander McQueen-ish um, when you have it like that? Oh, anyway, so I decided that I was going to turn it into a sailor's, um, like a sailor's, um, you know, sailor's collar thing. So, yeah, this is a sash from a different dress. I um, sort of skipped ahead and made one of my Christmas dresses. Because, um, yeah, I'm just sort of trying to get all the videos ready for the rest of the year. And, um, yeah, so I, but if you made a sash in like, a, like the magenta or the pale pink or the aqua of the dress and you put that there, it would look so cute. But, um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm just really happy with the way that it turned out. And um, yeah, relieved too, because I was just, I just felt so dense when I was reading the pattern. I was like, I am not understanding this. But then, yeah, once I finally understood what was going on, I was like, oh, okay, yeah. Part of it was me being dense, but part of it was them really not explaining things as well as they could have. But yeah, I'm quite happy with it. I'll show you some photos from the website. So these are the illustrations and I think they're pretty fair, um, they're pretty accurate compared to the last one I did. This is the woman in the actual dress and I, and he is my version of it. I think, yeah, I think the plain fabrics look really good and I think she's using a 
heavier weight cotton, like almost denim weight cotton. And I think that looks really good. So the camouflage print, uh, three yards of it. And it's um quite a heavy, like cargo pants type weight cotton. And yeah, it's aqua brown and beige. And yeah, I think that would look absolutely adorable in um, done up in this sewing pattern so yeah I think I'll do that one and a couple of plain ones as well because yeah I, as I said I think this dress reminds me of a diner and there's um, one of those Cinderella movies is um, yeah it's um, set in a diner and um, yeah so I thought it would be cool to do like ugly sister diner dresses there like in a couple of different colours plain colours and um, oh, I guess it had to be there but um, yeah anyway that's why I didn't make this dress in a pink because I didn't want it to look like I worked in that diner from that Cinderella movie anywho <laughs> but um, yeah so here's my dress and I'm so happy with it it's very cute and the next video you'll see is a collection is a um, collections video of um I'm just a quarterly review of all the jackets that I made and there's a black dress as well in July, August and September and then yeah after that it's back to vintage dresses and also there'll be a pink tweed jacket. So yeah thank you for watching and um, I might see you later on again this pretty in pink month.